Hello, thank you for tuning in. My name is Jonas and I want to take this opportunity to show you my houseplant welfare app, which I submitted to the Bravo challenge. This was the first challenge and I got the second place. The app description was to make an app that displays information from a database that was provided by chooseyourplant.com. Let me show you what I came up with. So this is my app, Plantagram, because of this Instagram-like features. The first page is just a feed of plants that were submitted by users, where you can see the username and the plant name. These can be submitted through a type form. This type form lets you upload a picture, select what plant it is, and type in your username. The next screen is the explore page where all the plants are listed. You can click on them and see some detailed information like an image or instructions and tips to find the perfect plant for you. You can also search for plants like when you tap in an A all the plants with an A in their name are displayed and you can sort the plants. If you click here, you can sort them by difficulty up or down. So the easiest plants will be displayed first. And the hardest plants like this one will be the last because they are advanced. Next up, we have an explore page where you can see the categories for the plants like low light plants where only the low light plants are displayed. Same goes with all these categories, like tall indoor plants are just a few. And you can always go back with this button. The last screen is called My Plants. Here you can list all the plants you own at the moment with a date when you got them. You can also search for the plants like we like I showed you before. To add a new plant, click on Add New Plant and you'll see this form, which is native integrated into Bravo, where you can define a name and a date when you got this plant, like today, and then click on Add New Plant. As you can see, the R plant is added to our list. Now let's have a look at the table that was provided for the challenge. We can see that we have all the plant names with some of their attributes and one image. I added a couple of things like the categories which we've seen earlier, the skill score, like how difficult is it, so intermediate is a 2, easy is 1, and then we have advanced is a 3, just so we can have these filter parameters later in the Airtable request. There are also now images which were the images shown here on the home screen. And we have my plans where we just added the R. We are now inside Bravo Studio with all the Airtable requests I have for this challenge. We have these normal requests that have the name of the table and for the detail page also an ID. And we also have a post request for the form you've seen in the My Plant section where we use this post request to open the table and add a new element to that table. We also have a sort request which can be identified by this sort parameter where we sort for the skill. The skill is ascending so it starts with the easiest plants. Then we have requests for all the categories which are just a filter by formula parameter and you search for the data low light inside the row category. This is the same with all with all categories just like with the different data for the category. Lastly let's have a look at the Figma file 
can see that I've divided it into pages, one page for the assets like the app icon, loading and splash screen, and then the main pages, which you can see here. So we can start here with the home screen. It has a refresh pull tag, which just means that if I scroll up to the top, it fetches the API again to see if there are new images in the feed. Then next up, we have the upload, which is just an iframe. You can see here full screen. So it takes up the whole space and here a web view with the link to my type form form. Next up, we have the list screen, which has this search component with the search bar and the sort icon, which directs us to this screen where we have these two op options, which are linked to either easy first with the request of ascending or descending would be difficult first. This container is only half of the page, so it duplicates left and right. Like we have seen it here. If this is filled with data, you get this type. When you click on any of these tiles, you get directed to the detail page. We have multiple detail pages. The reason for that is that we have a different request every time. You can see we have detail pages for the categories and then for ascending or descending sort. This is due to the Airtable request that we did in Bravo Studio. Let's take a look at the category screen. This is just groups inside of a container. As you can see here, all of these groups are linked by prototyping tool to each of their list pages which are themselves linked again to the detail page for the categories. You can see here that the first request is when you click on the group that you can search for all the plants that have tall in their category. When you click on one of the links in the list page for the categories, you get to the plant detail page for the categories. Why do we have a separate system? because this can be easily confused with the plants detail page, with, which has ID in capitals. But the ID that we're looking for here is provided by one of these category requests. You can see the selected data is a different ID. Back to the Figma file and to the My Plan screen. You can see the search is exactly the same, but now we have these plant containers. These containers get replicated like we have seen in the app here. This is the date and the name that we get from the Airtable database. Add new plant is connected to this form, which in itself is what you can see here. We have a name field, which is the input component and the date field is exactly the same thing. Now I would like to show you the workaround for the modal menu that I had here. It's just a screen that is completely covered, connected via prototyping. So if you click on this sort, it opens this menu where each button is connected either to easy first, which has the ascending Airtable request or the descending Airtable request for difficult first. This is not necessary anymore as Bravo introduced a modal menu. If you click on this icon, you would get to the settings page, which is just imprint and privacy at the moment. This would have been used for login credentials these login credentials are needed for users to each have their own list because at the moment we have seen in the Airtable that there can only be one list. So if this would have been published, all users would have this same list of plans, which is definitely not ideal. But Bravo hasn't released the login features and authentication yet. So this is just to show what could have been done. 
Lastly, we have a tabs menu, which has all of these icons connected to their screens. And what I also like to point out is these transition tags, which give the app a nice flow. Like you can see here, when I click on this modal menu, it sort of moves up. And when I click back, it just moves down again. So this is just like for a nice feel, which can be accomplished thanks to these very simple tags. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you understand Bravo a little better. Maybe you can take some of these tricks into your own apps. So keep Bravo rising and see you next time.